Hey guys, welcome to the Monday Marketing Minute. This week's episode is all about gated content. Should you use it? What's the best way to use it? What do you do with all that contact information after you get it? We'll cover those questions and more. Let's get started. You've probably interacted with gated content even if you didn't realize what you were doing. Downloading a guide or a white paper that requires sharing your contact information is using gated content. Before you start getting started gating every blog you write, we recommend choosing to gate content when something you know people will want to give up their email address for, something you've invested a lot of time into and are looking to gain leads from. We typically don't recommend gating content if your piece is well optimized for SEO. You're going to want to keep that information readily available on your site so you can rank for the targeted terms. However, we have done some experimenting with leaving the full content ungated on the site so it can rank well in Google and then gating a PDF download so users can access it at any time from their email. This way we drive organic traffic but are still able to collect leads from something that we put a lot of time and effort into. When you choose to gate your content, you should be aware of the user's journey. Generally, the more questions you ask in exchange for your content, the more likely users are to abandon the form without completing it. Womp womp. You should at least collect email addresses so you have a way of contacting users in the future or a way to send them the download they asked for. From here, you can launch campaigns specific to the content you offered or add them to a newsletter list if you've gotten consent. We go over that in all the detail as well as a few other posting tips on our blog of all about gated content. Check it out in the link below. That's all we have time for today, but make sure you let us know what you think and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.